Hi there, welcome to this video where we're going to look at how to create a World of Warcraft add-on. The first video in this series will of course be displaying a Hello World message on screen. We're also then going to look at how to make our own custom slash commands so we can say things like slash Hello World. Before we dive too deep into this, we do have an article version of this video and the series over at developer.school. So you can check that out, you can see exactly what we're going to run through here in the video and you can look at it at your own time. So before jumping into any code editor, what I want you to do is open up your World of Warcraft client, head over to the chat box and inside of the chat box type slash script, then message, open up a parentheses, a speech mark, and then put some text inside, like hello world. We then want to close off the speech marks and the parentheses and hit enter. We should say hello world here on screen. And that's essentially what we're going to build throughout this project. But the user isn't going to have to type anything in the chat for the message to initially appear. With that said, let's jump in to creating our first World of Warcraft add-on. The editor which we're going to be using for this series is going to be Visual Studio Code. You can use some popular alternatives such as Atom, Sublime Text, and even things like Notepad++ would be fine for this project. Once you have downloaded Visual Studio Code, you can, if you want, use the same theme as me. That's called Shades of Purple. So you can download Shades of Purple and install it just like that. It's not mandatory for this series at all, but I do get a lot of questions about the theme and fonts which I use. The extensions that we will be using, though, is something called the WoW Bundle. So if you type in WoW Bundle, hit install on that. And that will just give us some colorization for the code that we're going to write inside of the editor. We'll continue to improve and add more extensions as necessary throughout the series. But for now, I want to jump in to creating our first add-on. So if you're currently inside of World of Warcraft right now, hit that exit game button because we're going to go over to the interface add-ons folder inside of our directory and make a new add-on. So the add-on we'll be creating is going to be based on classic, but you can do essentially the same thing that we're going to do for retail You'll just have to change the interface number that we're going to look at in a moment. But for now, I want you to go to the classic folder, then hit interface, then add-ons. And inside of here, we want to make a new folder. And that folder is going to be called Hello World. We can then open this folder up inside of Visual Studio Code if we simply drag this folder into the editor. We'll then create our first file. That file will be called Hello World.toc. This is known as the table of contents file, and it allows us to specify some metadata, i.e. some information about our add-on. This is things like the add-on name, the title, the author, and so on. It's required, and it has to be the same name as the folder that you've created. For example, we have the hello world folder, so we have the hello world.toc. If we had another folder called xyz, you'd have to make the xyz.toc. This is the first file that the add-on looks for when we load the add-on in-game. In order to define a metadata item, we'll need to add two hashes, then the name of the thing we want to define, such as interface, add a colon, and then a value. The value would be 11304. Now at this point, I would forgive you for saying what on earth does this even mean and why do we need to add this interface value? Well, if we think about it, World of Warcraft needs to know what version this add-on is pointed toward. This allows the client to say, hey, this add-on is out of date, it doesn't comply with the latest patch, and it may not work. So all we're saying here is that we're pointing this add-on at the current patch of 11304. There's multiple ways which we could get the current interface number. The first one we're going to look at in a moment, and that's by running a script inside of the game. Alternatively, you could just look at a T or C file that another add-on has created and that is up to date. It's much more reliable, however, to use the command in game, which we're going to look at in a second. Next up, we want to add the title and the title will be hello world. We'll also add some notes and the notes will be shows a message of hello world on screen. Finally, we can add things like an author and the current version. That's all the metadata we need to add at this point. We can add other elements, but for now, that essentially allows us to see the title and a description of the add-on inside of the game. 
this TLC file is also used to run files that we've created for this add-on. So underneath this definition, we can say hello world dot Lua, and Lua is the scripting language that we're gonna use, and we have to use, when creating World of Warcraft add-ons. It's a very lightweight and fast language, and we're gonna be picking it up step-by-step step as we start to create our add-ons. So that's pretty much everything we need for this TOC file. Before we jump back into the game, I do wanna go and make that hello world dot Lua file. So let's make a hello world dot Lua, like so. Before we do anything else, let's open up World of Warcraft again and see how we can get this interface number in game. That will allow us to make sure our add-on stays up to date if there are any patches. And it will also allow us to get the appropriate interface number for classic and retail. So here we are inside of World of Warcraft. We are gonna type this run command, which gives us the ability to print the fourth result from get build info. When we hit enter, we should see 11304. Now you can either type what we just typed in there, or alternatively, you can paste it in from the article, and then you might wanna make a macro in game that allows you to just press this at any moment. Essentially, we're printing the fourth result from get build info, which does contain that interface ID. But the question you might have right now is this looks quite magic. How did we determine that this get build info command and especially the fourth result gives us the version? Well, we can go over to wow.gamepedia.com and it does have a great API reference or should I say the only API reference that I know of for World of Warcraft add-on development. If we just take a look at that, I'll drag it on screen and we just maximize it. We can see that the parameters for this get build info the fourth one is the TOC version, and that's the interface.toc version number, which we're gonna use for our add-on development. Now that we're confident that we know how to get the interface number, one other thing we can see is if we head over to our interface add-ons within game, we have this hello world add-on. Now mine's currently disabled. We are gonna reload that with that enabled. And we might see, and you may have already seen this message, which says, are loading the interface add-ons hello world.lua and that's fine because simply we have nothing inside of the file so it's going to tell us that we do have an error at this point our next step is to of course add something to that file so we don't have that error so back over to our editor and we can navigate to hello world.lua i like to navigate around visual studio code by hitting command p or control p and then just simply typing in where you want to go inside of here we want to type message then we want to have these brackets and inside we want to say hello world. The message comes from the World of Warcraft client. This is a global, as it's known in software development, that gives us the ability to display a message on screen. And we looked at that inside of the game when we typed slash script message and then a message. If we navigate back to World of Warcraft, we can type slash reload. And when we do that, we should see hello world on screen like before, but we didn't have to type anything in the chat. So now we have the ability to display this message to the user, albeit it's not a very important or it's not a very useful add-on at this point. But if we navigate back to our editor, we can type local name and try not to get too caught up on the syntax of local at this point. It just means it's private to this file because everything is not inside of a function. It's not block scope as would call it. It just essentially means this doesn't leak outside of hello world.lua. Then we have this unit name and the unit name comes from the World of Warcraft client once again. And we want to say the unit name of player. If we look at the World of Warcraft API, we can see that the unit name allows us to get a particular unit ID that we can query. For example, player, party two, pet, and so on. We could also click into unit ID to see more information about that. But if we just go back right now, we get the option to get the name back. We also get the realm if we wanted that too. For now, we're just interested in the name. So the next thing we'd like to do is concatenate this message. That means combining both of the strings to return hello space. And we want to add two dots that allows us to join these two things together. Name, two dots again, then an exclamation mark. So this should give us hello Frodo Laggins, like so, where the Frodo Laggins at this point is your name. Head back on over to World of Warcraft and type in slash reload and you should see hello your character name. 
Now we could make this a little more interesting if we had a slash command. So if we had a slash command that allowed us to say something like slash hello world, right now it says type slash help for a listing of a few commands, but it's relatively simple to register your own slash command. So back over to our editor, we can make now a new function. We'll just make it above that for now because we are gonna pull these inside of the function in a moment called a local function named hello world handler. That takes in a name. Then at the bottom, we're going to add end. So this function of hello world handler with the name that we can pass into it is gonna be used like this, slash hello world. And then the name we pass in, such as Paul, this name value would essentially represent Paul. So name would be equal to Paul. Then we're gonna pass in this message just like before. So we'll take the message and we'll put it inside of the hello world handler. For now, we can add two dashes just to comment out this local name of unit name player. This simply means it just won't be used inside of this file. The same goes for these other two comments right here and the one above. We can add a slash underscore, all caps, hello one equals slash hello world. This essentially allows us to register a slash command that points towards this function. So anytime we say slash hello world with a argument of Paul, it'll call this function right here. And that function will say message, hello, that person's name with the exclamation mark. The final thing that we have to do is tell World of Warcraft about this slash command. And that's done with the slash CMD list. Inside of the brackets here, we want to say hello, and that has to match the hello just like that with the hello one. We don't want to put one. This essentially means that anything with this name of hello will be registered as a slash command. So if we add another example of slash hello two equal to slash hello w, that will also be registered to this function. So the way that we register this is by saying equals hello world handler. When we do that and go back to wow, we should be able to slash reload once again. And when we type slash reload, it's of course gonna update the add-on with any of the code that we've written inside of the game. So if we type slash hello world, hit enter, we get hello. And that gives us nothing essentially because we haven't added a name. We are gonna add a check for this in a moment. We can also type hello world poll. And then we get that hello world poll, like we said inside of our editor. And we can also type slash hello w to have the same effect. Next up, I'd like to improve this a little more by changing it so that if we type slash hello world, but we don't give this a player name, it should say hello to the player's user. Alternatively, if we do type slash hello world with a player name, it should say hello to that person. So essentially we have two control flows here. The first one is if the string dot length of name is greater than zero, then essentially what we're saying in here is if the hello world has been passed something like Paul and it hasn't been passed nothing, then we want to say hello to that person. So we can indent this message and then we can add end, but we don't actually want our if statement to end just there. Instead, we want to say else. So this happens if the user hasn't passed a name inside, we want to instead get that player name. So we're gonna take this name that we commented out earlier on and we're gonna paste it or rewrite it inside of this else statement. We then want to display the message, but we're gonna change this to be player name instead of name now. And we want to say message, hello, concatenate this with the player name like so. If we head back over to our wow client and we type slash reload, we should be able to say hello world that'll give us hello with the player name. And otherwise, if we type hello world with another thing such as developer.school, it should say hello developer.school. The final thing I'd like to do is look at how to make this a little better. So right now our code works, but it could be more readable. We can change this to copy it out and make a new local variable called name exists. Set that equal to the string dot length of name being greater than zero. And now we can say if the name exists or something like user added name, and this doesn't change the functionality of our hello world handler. It simply just makes it easier to read. 
Then instead of copying this message twice with this player name, we can make a new function called something like show greeting for a name. We need to have end underneath that. And then we could define our greeting by saying hello, concatenate the name with the exclamation mark. And then after that, saying message with the greeting. And now instead of defining this message twice, each time with either just the player name or the name, we can replace this with show greeting and just pass in the name. The same goes for this message underneath. We can pass in the player name instead. This makes our function much easier to read. We're firstly checking to see whether a user added a name and this is in English, so we're able to understand this. Then we're showing the greeting for that name. Otherwise, we're getting the user's player name and we're showing that greeting instead. Now, it's not absolutely necessary that you go through and do this, but it just makes sure that when you come back to this in the future, that your code is understandable for yourself and maybe other people that would read this. So there we have a, the first in a series of creating World of Warcraft add-ons. I'd love to hear what you thought about this inside of the comments section below. And of course, hit the subscribe button to stay updated for more WoW content. But if you'd also like to check out how to make mobile applications, I do have lots of mobile and web tutorials on this channel, which you can also take a look at. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you soon in the next of this series.